Hello, I'm Willie George. Welcome to this edition of the Faith Roots Podcast. You know, we're talking about the law of continuance, and right now we're talking about this law as it pertains to the nation of Israel. Uh, We talked about how that God restored the land of Israel first so that it could bear up under the population of Jewish people who would come back. There would be something there to feed them. The agriculture had to be restored first. That's Ezekiel 36. The miracle of the rebirth of Israel is in Ezekiel 37. And then there is the biggest threat to Israel's existence up until now. And it is this invasion by an invader named Gog. He is from Rosh, Meshach, Tubal. He has a number of allies with him. I believe he is a a leader from Russia. We'll see. There are differences of opinion about this. And I respect those who have different opinions. Uh, I I don't always agree with it, but I do respect them. I do believe that whatever happens here is going to be soon, and there is going to be such a miraculous deliverance of Israel, regardless of who this is. Everybody will have to say, this is from God. Okay, so let's get into Ezekiel again. Uh, This is the New American Standard. Uh, It is Ezekiel 38.8. After many days, you, Gog, will be summoned. In the latter years, you will come into the land that is restored from the sword. Now, that's the nation of Israel because they were not able to come back in and take this land peaceably. They probably wanted to do that, but they had to fight for it. Whose inhabitants have been gathered from many nations, over a hundred different nations of the earth the Jews have come home from. They have come to the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste, and that's not the case now. But its people were brought out from the nations, and they are living securely, all of them. Uh, Richard Nixon and Golda Meir had a conversation, and uh, this is what Golda Meir said about the difference between the United States and the land of Israel. She said the land of Israel is a land with insecure borders, but very secure cities. And that is the truth. Whereas the United States is a land of secure borders and insecure cities. And unfortunately today, some of our leaders don't want to secure the border, but we should have secure borders now. But its people were brought out from the nations. They're living securely, all of them. You will go up and you will come like a storm, this invasion force. Uh, This sounds like a rapid deployment force, paratroopers perhaps. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your troops and many people with you. Thus says the Lord God, it will come about on that day that thoughts will come into your mind and you will devise an evil plan and you will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go against those who are at rest that live securely, all of them living without walls, having no bars nor gates, to capture a spoil and to seize plunder and to turn your hand against the waste places which are now inhabited and against the people who are gathered from the nations who have acquired cattle and goods, who live at the center of the world. And that's where Israel is. It's the center of the world. And God put it there because he wanted to use it to show his goodness to all the nations of the world. Now listen to what happens when this invasion starts to take place. There will be a little bit of forewarning. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all its villages and all the young lions thereof is what King James says, will say to you, have you come to capture spoil? Have you assembled your company to seize plunder, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to capture great spoil? All of these conditions uh, have been met. We're seeing this today. Uh, Israel has become a very, very wealthy nation. It certainly is a desirable nation, a nation that would have a great deal of spoil. First of all, Israel has amazing technology. There is so much technology that comes out of the land of Israel. Another thing is that, that the mineral wealth of the Dead Sea is just incredible, and much of it is fertilizer. And nations that are having a hard time with productive land 
would covet the fertilizer that comes from the Dead Sea. The agriculture in the land of Israel is amazing. They've pioneered drip irrigation. They have learned how to use even salt water to irrigate certain of their crops in the deserts. They've made them to bloom. And then this is a very recent development. Just in the last decade, maybe a little longer than that, Israel discovered huge, huge natural gas reserves off the Mediterranean coast. Now, Russia is threatened by that. Russia wants to put a stranglehold on Europe by the restriction of natural gas. They want to, to control Europe with natural gas. <clears throat> Europe does not have enough petroleum in order to meet its needs. Now comes Israel which represents a threat to Russia because they're building a pipeline that will go into Europe, and this is not something that the Russians want. And so we can see here that there is reason for uh, Israel to be invaded. It is a threat. There are a number of different reasons why an enemy would want to come against them. Uh, and so Israel threatens with its own pipeline. Another thing. There is no telling how much military equipment Israel has destroyed that came from Russia and probably hasn't been paid back. Almost all of the neighbors of Israel at one time or another were armed to the teeth with Russian military equipment, and they were defeated soundly by the Jewish people in all of their different wars. And uh, Russia hadn't forgotten that, I can tell you. The allies of Israel, Sheba and Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof, they voice a weak protest. Uh, you know what this is a picture of? This is a picture of the Abraham Accords. These are Arab states in the Gulf, Saudi Arabia, UAE, others, who have signed on peace treaties with Israel. And they are afraid because they do not want Iran to come in to the middle of the scene and take possession of Mecca, Medina, the holy sites in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the Iranians are Shiite Muslims. The others in the area are mainly uh, Sunni Muslims. There's a great deal of friction between the two. And so there's a reason why they would be threatened by this invasion, because Persia is a big part of this. And so uh, the other thing is there are young lions out of the merchants of Tarshish. Now, some say that this is perhaps the United States, Australia, perhaps Canada, other Western powers, and it may be. But in the long run, when all is said and done, it will be God, not the might of America, it will be God that delivers the nation of Israel. America may have some involvement, but it will be God who gets the glory. It, most of the work will be from the Lord. And uh, we will see that He delivers the nation. He will defend Israel from these attacks. I want to read Ezekiel 38, 18 through 20. <coughs> Let's go there. Uh, Ezekiel 38, 18 through 20. It shall come to pass at the same time when Gog will come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken, surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea, the fowls of the heaven, the beasts of the field, and all creeping things that creep upon earth, and all the men that are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence, and the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. There's going to be an earthquake an earthquake that is felt all over that part of the world. It will be huge, and it will devastate these invaders. Uh, it, it is God working to defend the people of Israel. Then he says in verse 21, I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. So there are two things there. There will be some work done by the IDF. They will be a part of this, but even their fighting will not be enough to do it all by themselves. God will then do something he has done over and again. He will discomfort the enemies of Israel, meaning that friendly fire will take out a huge part of this invasion force. They will not be able to make it. Uh, they will fight against each other. Anytime you bring in soldiers from all these different nations, 
the uh, possibility of them destroying and fighting each other by mistake is going to be huge. And uh, you've got several different languages that are spoken here. Uh, they don't all speak the same language. Their communications will be difficult. And uh, once one group starts to attack another, the first the, the group that's attacked has no choice but to respond. And so there's going to be a huge discomfiting where there is friendly fire and the enemies destroy each other. Uh, so the earthquake is only the first of a number of things that happen. Uh, look at verse 22. I will plead against him, this is God saying, with pestilence and with blood. Now, years ago, I read about a bomb that could be used on the battlefield that when soldiers inhale its contents, it totally breaks down the blood within their bodies. That's a possible uh, a, a, tr a possible explanation for what's happening here. I'll plead against them with blood. Their actual, actual blood decomposes within their own bodies. Uh, with pestilence, that's uh, chemical warfare. Chemical and biological warfare it could very much happen. And I'm not saying that Israel would use it, but if these countries are coming, there's no doubt they would probably come with biological and chemical weapons. And if their own weapons explode in their midst, you're going to see them suffer greatly. Great hailstones, that could be natural. Uh, it could be missiles. It could also be something supernatural that God does. Fire and brimstone. Some of this could be tactical nuclear weaponry. Certainly a possibility. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am the Lord. Now, this is what's amazing about all this, is the underdog is definitely Israel, and all of these nations are going to appear to be invincible, especially if it's Russia at the helm. Turkey is also a mighty military power. Iran also has a capable military. And then you've got the others who have an intense hatred of Israel. They will come along too. So it will not succeed. And everybody will know that it was God's doing that this invasion was stopped. Now, one last thing, and it's in the book of Isaiah, <clears throat> chapter 17, verse 1. The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Verse 13. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them, and they shall flee far off, and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind, and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. Behold, at evening tide trouble, and before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. Now no doubt this invasion takes place just to the west of Damascus, in the environs of Damascus. Damascus has been conquered a number of times, but it has never been taken off the face of the earth. It could be that this prophecy is fulfilled in Isaiah 17 during this season. And if so, uh, the battle only lasts 24 hours. Evening time trouble, and before the morning he is not. So maybe not even 24 hours. It happens very, very quickly. So God is going to show himself strong on behalf of Israel. Why? Because what he begins with a miracle, he sustains with a miracle, and he finishes with a miracle. That is the law of continuance. See you tomorrow.